Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Goblin Quest. Uh, this is a book by Jim C. Hines, uh, and it involves the little blue-skinned goblin there on the cover. Um, the main character of this novel is Jig. Uh, he is the runt of the goblin litter, and he is picked on by all the other bigger, meaner goblins. So, uh, Jig is in many ways, uh, you know, the an antithesis of what goblins are. Um, he is intelligent, um, whereas the rest of the goblins in his particular cave are definitely not. Uh, they're, they are much more uh, accustomed to using their muscles to think with. Um, and for goblins, that's fine. That's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to be mean and vicious and evil, and they, you know, think with their, their muscles as opposed to anything else. Um, they are kind of the low man on the totem pole in uh, the caves, um, where everything is bigger and meaner and more evil than they are, and is co are constantly um, at odds with each other. I mean, it's goblins. What can I say? Um, in a lot of ways, this does play into the stereotype, the, the trope of, of what a goblin is, and that's not a bad thing. Um, I think that uh, a lot of times with the like reimagining of um, of monsters, what really means what it really is to be a monster, things like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, authors mm, tend to end up in the weeds in many cases, and this. Um, Instead of having all the goblins uh, not fitting the mold, it's just one goblin that doesn't fit the mold of what is a goblin. And that makes this, um, I think, a lot better because uh, you can um, empathize with Jig in the situation that he's in. He has to deal with these people that are very different from him. He may belong to them by um, virtue of actually being a goblin, but at the same time, he's very different from them. He is, he's not what you would call a typical goblin. Um, on top of being, you know, this runt of the litter, he's nearsighted. Um, so he has problems with his vision too. Um, and again, he is intelligent. He uses his brains when, when permitted. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> so one day Jig is, uh, forced to uh, be on guard duty uh, for uh, the goblins. And uh, actually, let me back up real quick. Uh, that little red and uh, yellow thing that's on top of Jig's head there, that's a fire spider. Um, it's uh, Jig's pet. Um, and it is what it, it is. Um, it's a spider that can burst into flames. Um, and Jig, it, it goes around with him, and it's part of the reason Jig's bald, because it gets excited and burns his hair off. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so Jig is uh, guarding the goblin caves, um, and he is, uh, well, he's forced to gu guard the caves because the goblins who are, are supposed to be on guard duty they basically bully him into doing it for them, because uh, why am I going to sit around being on guard duty when Jig can do it for me? Um, which is really a dumb idea if you think about it. He's not physically imposing at all. Um, he is uh, completely useless as far as that goes, as a, as a goblin. Plus, he's nearsighted. These people are going to have to be like right on top of him before he even sees them. Anyway, um, so he's roped into doing guard duty. As he is on guard, he is captured by a group of adventurers. And this is, you know, the typical adventuring trope here, where um, the prince has to prove himself. So they've gone down into this, this uh, cavern, dungeon area, 
where the rod of creation, the magical artifact that they are looking for, is said to um, reside. And so uh, they grab Jig because he's this really scrawny goblin that, you know, obviously is no threat to them. Um, and they figure that they can use him to help them navigate the, the dungeon. Uh, that he, you know, he by virtue of him li living there, that this is his home, he must know his way around. Um, so there's the, the prince uh, who is there to prove himself. He has a wizard for a brother who is um, maybe a little unhinged. Uh, there's a elven thief and a dwarf warrior that accompany him on the quest. Um, <clears throat> now, one of the reasons that I, I... Okay, first off, I did like the book. Um, I have read this one, and I've read the, the second one in the series. Uh, I have not yet read the third one in the series, but they are enjoyable, and I do plan on re reading the third book in the series. Um, I think that... Uh, a lot hinges on the very first book in in a series. Um, if you uh, there have been a number of, of book series that I've read where the first book impressed me uh, so much that I went out and got the other books in the series, and uh, others that I read the first book in the series and I had the opposite reaction that the the first book did not impress me in any way, and so I never picked up any of the next books. Um, the I'm trying to remember what the name of the series. I, I believe it's by John Delaney. Let me check. Um, yes, let's see. thought was in here. Um, anyway, let's see. Let me... Sorry about that. Uh, it's the Last Apprentice series by Joseph Delaney. Um, I read Revenge of the Witch, which uh, uh, the, the Last Apprentice, I want to say. Uh, there's a movie with um, one of the bridges uh, that came out within the last 10, 15 years. Uh, it was based on Revenge of the Witch. Revenge of the Witch, I hated it. I thought it was terrible. Um, it was it was slow and boring. And I did end up reading Curse of the Bane and Night of the Soul Stealer that came later, uh, because I had, I had picked up those two books from uh, for like a dollar at a um, thrift store, uh, and uh, then I ended up getting uh, the. Revenge of the Witch later. So I read that one, and then I read the other two because I already had them. Um, if I had just read the first one, I never would have picked up the other two because I did not like Revenge of the Witch. I thought it was a terrible book. Um, uh, and so, you know, this one, by that same token, is an excellent book. Uh, it's a great start to the series, and it makes you interested in Jig and um, how he is going to you know, it, I mean, he's a goblin. Most of the time you don't feel um, sympathy. You don't feel empathy for the goblin. Um, the goblin is there to be killed. It's it's cannon fodder. And in this case, uh, while the other goblins are typical of goblins everywhere, uh, Jig is shown to be different. And uh, by that same token, or by that same token, but because of the fact that he is different uh, and because of the fact that he has uh, qualities that are different from the rest of the goblins you can uh, empathize with him you can you can feel what it what it's like to be in his situation uh, now this isn't a like dramatic novel this is a um, funny novel this is a comedy and um, the comedy is well executed and it, it's not like this is roll on the floor uh, laughing all the time. It is an adventure novel as well. So uh, there are monsters and, and there the people are on a quest. Um, and Jig's just really trying not to die because he's 
been captured by adventurers who usually kill his people. So he's trying to help them save his own skin at the same time. So <clears throat> uh, the humor hits well, um, and the the story is... Uh, It has those things, the stereotypes and things that make it so that it's easy for you to to uh, understand the characters, to understand their, their motivations. And at the same time, it does have um, that uh, spark of originality that uh, sets it apart from some of the other uh, books, adventure books. Um, if you have questions or comments, if you've read uh, Goblin Quest, if you've read any of the books in the series, please let me know. If you have questions, again, let me know. Comment down below. Uh, like, subscribe, put the bell on so you get notifications when I'm posting new videos, and uh, enjoy what you're reading.